All right, get that, that. <laughs> no echo, right? It's a little bit better. All right, let me change my screen here. It's so good to see you guys. What's going on? All right, so we are reading through the New Testament today. We're gonna be picking it up in John. And here's what I want you guys to do before we even get into it. I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna block the view counter. I wish there was a way to turn that off. It's really annoying. I don't, I don't wanna be paying attention to that. That's not even accurate anyway. So there's one uh, something I want you guys to do before we get started, okay? I want you to go over here to weshallworship.com slash community, okay? Link is in the description. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, da, ba, 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 right there, okay? Boom, go to weshallworship.com slash community to join our community. So what you're gonna do when you get there, all right, you'll click the community button, you'll scroll down here, you'll download the Google Classroom app. So I got a link here for Android, a link here for iPhone. You'll click the box that says join the community. If you have a Gmail account, you can use that Gmail email to sign in. Um, but if you don't, you should be able to enter in your non-Gmail email address and this will create a gmail specifically for your community room profile and then of course you'll click join class and get ready to encounter god and please click contact below if you're having trouble signing up okay so that's what i need you guys to do okay before before we get into it today all right we are going to be picking it up i think in john chapter 17 we tried to pick it up while i was down in uh washington dc but we were not able to because um, busy. so i apologize guys um i apologize for being busy it's not my intention i promise okay um but no i mean so so you guys can actually uh watch this from any destination okay we have my personal facebook facebook.com slash mr dot shiavo instagram.com slash mr dot shiavo got facebook.com slash we shall worship and youtube.com slash at we shall worship okay you can also go to we shall worship.com and click on the live button and it's also right there okay what's going on melissa hello 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 what's up the gomez fam thanks so much for jumping on uh it, it's fun to be here it's fun to be here with you guys so without further ado we're not gonna waste any time i'm gonna block the view counter because i hate that thing it makes me makes me emotional so <laughs> So we are going to, let me just see, make sure that I have my little soaking thing on repeat. It'll be fine. We still got an hour left in it. All right. So John chapter 17, I think is where we're picking up. Okay. So I'm going to go to biblegateway.com because it is, it is the website for this kind of thing. Ooh, promises of the prophecy. Interesting. Um, Okay, so I just don't need to know how this is looking for you guys on your end, how this looks on Instagram. I almost forgot to post my little links in Instagram. So um, I know I put join the Google Meet, call in, or uh, comment to submit your question, guys. We're going to do that at the end. So you guys can just hold on to that link and at the end we will um, open it up for any sort of, you know, questions or conversations or things like that. Okay, so, um, but I'm actually going to pin that community uh, room link because if people don't get plugged in, then we're not really doing our job, are we? So um, here we go. So we're going to go to John chapter 17. Okay, and I'm just going to confirm that. How am I going to confirm that? All right, I'm going to go to the classroom that we're in. I have to figure out how to get rid of these other classes. I don't know how to do that. I gotta figure it out. But um, if you go to the community room, okay, you're gonna go to classwork and look at that Bible. Look at the Bible, it's right there. So we made it to chapter 16. So we're gonna go um, over to chapter 17 now, okay? Let's pray it in. Okay, here we go. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are your your word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God that is you so we thank you father God that um you don't judge us for not knowing you you don't uh condemn us for not knowing your story or reading your word but God we want to know who you are we want to know your word we want to study you we want to have relationship with you and we want to know who you are so father God I just thank you that you would guide me in breaking down your word, that Lord uh, and the Holy Spirit, that you would put the words in my mouth to speak, that there wouldn't be any words from Andrew that are spoken, but that it would just be you. 
and I, I commit every single word I'm about to speak uh, to you, Jesus. So I thank you, Father, um, for your love, for the way you love me, for the way you love all of your people who are coming on here to study your word and just all of your children in general. And we just thank you, God, for holy conviction um, to get deeper into relationship with you by reading your word, by learning who you are uh, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, all right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pin this comment over here. Just going to pin that. I'm not going to show the comment. All right, here we go. So I'm in the little corner. Hey. All right, chapter 17. Here we go. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you've given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I've finished the work which you've given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Two things I'm noticing already. Jesus says this is eternal life, that they may know you, us, that we may know him, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. He refers to himself in the, in the third person here. I, I, I think some of us missed that. So he doesn't say in this is eternal life to have cor completely correct and sound doctrine. It doesn't say in this is eternal life to argue sensibly, uh, you know, uh, uh, sensibly, nonsensibly, right? <laughs> to argue with people, um, you know, unnecessarily, about uh you know about doctrine it says simply that this eternal life that they may know you okay as long as we know him the only true true god jesus christ and jesus christ whom you sent but they're one and the same okay we will have eternal life that's it okay another thing too jesus says i finished the work which you've given me to do i have finished the work which you i'm gonna change camera angles here because i need i need to get up and personal here we go let me um you know let me reduce this window here there we go this is gonna let me see hold on i'm gonna see will this work there we go oh so as long as i minimize it Yeah, but I want this view. How does that look? That's nice, right guys? That should be good right there, right? See where it starts to get weird. Actually, it seems like it doesn't get weird. Oh yeah, it does. All right, hold on. Hold on, just making this pretty for you guys. Hold on. All right, where's that ad? There we go. Does that look good for you guys? The things I go through for you. <laughs> All right, here we go. That should be good. That should be a good view. Yeah, I want you to focus on the word, not me. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the word first. All right. So Jesus said here, "I finished the work which you have given me to do, and now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself." Let me speak something boldly to you. If you're sitting on your couch, going, "Jesus, take me home," and you have not finished the work that God has given you to do, you are out of order. Your attitude needs changing because Jesus said that I have finished the work. Therefore, Father, glorify me together with yourself. In other words, in other words, let me come up in fellowship with you in heaven. So what right do we have to want that for ourselves when we haven't finished the work that he's given us to do? We may think we're done because of our age or because of our circumstance or whatever the case is there. But I, I guarantee you, if you still got left you know breath left in your lungs you are not done so stop praying for god to take you away when you didn't even finish what he told you to do all right come on somebody come on nikki pizza 
Someone, someone, someone type amen in the comments if I'm, if I'm speaking to the, if I'm speaking to you, okay? Verse six, I've manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me, hold on, I want to make sure. Can you see my cursor if I don't click this? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, now they have known all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. They have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. So, I again, kind of a call back to apart from the Father, I can do nothing. All right. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours. Look at that. Capitalize M, capitalize Y. Why? Because of the same person. And yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. So these people that you chose, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are. Wow. Keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So Jesus' request to God was that we would have communion and unity with him as Jesus did. So Jesus came on earth to demonstrate the relationship with the Father that we should have, not the relationship that a pastor or some minister demonstrates that we should have, but actually Jesus, the one who was perfect and sinless, demonstrated the relationship that we should have with the Father. So there's no there's no cap. We're the ones that put the boundary on on ourselves. We're the ones that limit ourselves with our mindset and saying, oh, you know, I'll never have that relationship with God. I'll never have that intimacy with God. Yeah, as the as a man speaketh in his heart, so he is. So what out of the abundance of the heart flows out of the mouth. So if that's what you believe in your heart, then your heart needs work. Maybe you need inner healing. Maybe you need deliverance. But that is not the truth that Jesus is um, clearly portraying here. If his standard is himself, if he, if he's saying that our standard of relationship with the Father is himself, whew, we got work to do. We got work to do, guys. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you've given, who you gave me, I kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. I think this is referring to Satan. Perdition refers to hell, and especially the religious idea of eternal damnation. So the son of, yeah, the son of, of hell, essentially, which is, I think, where, you know, uh, I think is, again, referring to Satan, because that's who's going to get cast into the lake of fire. Um... At the, and then, uh, you know, all of every time that that heat goes on, it freaks me out. Um, <laughs> I renounce fear in Jesus name. Lord, give me your fear of the Lord. Um, so the son of. Right, Satan, that the scripture might be fulfilled again, I think it's Satan because, um, you know, when uh, it says in Revelations that all of hell is going to be tossed into the lake of fire and obviously Satan um, is going to get taken out. He's going to get beat down and he's going to get thrown in the lake of fire with it also. So anytime the devil tries to remind you of what you did, just remind him of his future. Every time he tries to remind you of your past, just remind him of his future. Come on, somebody. But now I come to you in these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word and the world has hated them because they're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So people hated Jesus because he's not of the world, and so they hate us because we are not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So Jesus is saying, again, all you people that are like, Lord, take me now. He's saying, don't pray that. He's saying, don't pray that you'd be taken out of the world, but that you would be kept from the evil one. Okay? They're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Now, when I hear the word sanctify, I think of the process of sanctification. 
and typically the process of sanctification is what we call it when a new believer goes through learning what god's commandments are and standards are for our lives and uh basically fails until they uh you know until they learn to keep according to those things or honestly you know it's just kind of an everlasting process i feel like because when do you stop sinning never right so um that they all also may be sanctified by the truth and you know maybe that's my limiting mindset you know i just don't think that uh you know i i haven't seen anyone that's been able to live completely sinless so um that they also may be sanctified by the truth so jesus is saying even though i don't need it i'm going to sanctify sanctify myself so that you would follow that demonstration you would follow the model i'm going to speak to the father in this way so that you will replicate the model again this is what this is what jesus is saying okay that they also may be sanctified by the truth okay let me see uh i'm just gonna share this tab let me see what that looks like there we go that's what i want yeah i want you I want my bookmark showing. <laughs> well, then obviously, just calendar, classroom, drive, all that stuff. But yeah, just uh, just annoying. Okay, Jesus prays for all believers. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So. Jesus is saying that he's praying for us that we would be unified as Jesus is unified with the Father. Again, high standards here, guys, and we are we are not doing a good job. We are not doing a good job at all. So the standard that God, that Jesus is setting for us is way, just way, way higher than I think we hold ourselves to. And so just as Paul said, you know, as it is possible with you, um, you know, have, be in harmony with with your brothers and sisters in christ so jesus is saying that we are the standard of unity that we need to have with each other that standard is literally mimicked by the unity that he had with the father that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me i have given them that they may be one just as we are one I and them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which you've given me for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Guys, this is such this is so so amazing. Jesus is praying for these people, okay, who are with him. He's saying, I pray that they would be with me where I am and that those who you've given me, that they would behold my glory because you loved me before the foundation of the world. He's again, not praying that they would, that they would have, you know, ministry degrees or, or masters in divinities or anything like that, that they would be studied, that they would be approved by man. He's, he, he, his prayer is that they would be with Jesus like we need to we need to start reading the bible and aligning our prayers to how jesus prayed to how god to how the holy spirit prayed through people and start basing our prayers off of off of the word and maybe we'll actually see them get answered because the bible says that those who pray according to the father's will those prayers will be answered so that he may be glorified but if we're not praying according to his will what makes you think he's going to answer it he says, O righteous father, the world has not known you, but I have known you and these have known that you sent me and I've declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Amen. Let's go on to John 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered and Judas who betrayed him also knew the place for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, I am he 
they drew back and fell to the ground. Now this passage always confused me because I'm like, like if they are, if they were, you know, uh, you know, re revering him, if they like, I'm thinking like they fell to the ground and like worshiped him, uh, or something. So then why would they crucify him? But I heard someone say that because God's name is so holy that I am he is the same I am he that God declared out of the burning bush to Moses. And so it's such a holy name that, uh, you know, that Adonai or Elohim, you know, uh, name of God that they would, they would, you know, fall to the floor if it was ever said. It wasn't, you know, it was, wasn't supposed to be used. It wasn't supposed to be spread. So, um, so that was a little confusing to me, but I, I think that's that's why they fall to the ground. Then Jesus asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. So he's saying, I am God. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those whom you gave me. I have lost none. And Simon Peter, how many Simon Peters in the chat? Come on, somebody. Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant. Why the servant? I don't, I don't was he just like the closest one? I, I don't understand. Uh, he struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was, excuse me, Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Wow. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. So we're seeing, like, even the religious leaders had... A feeling that he was going to die for the Jewish people, but they still don't believe, they still didn't believe that he was God, because they were abundant. Let's see, Charlie saying interesting in the interestingly in the original Greek, the he is not there. It's actually I already said I am, Amen, Amen. That's that's so cool. Um, so we're seeing throughout the story here that that you know prophecies are literally being fulfilled here but the religious leaders it's not that they had a lack of knowledge of the word they had pro they uh some of these guys i think most of the pharisees and sadducees had to memorize isaiah in order to be a pharisee or sadducee so they know the word but it wasn't in their hearts like jesus said you know you know my commandment you know uh they know my commandments but their hearts are far from me so, something to that extent so Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. <laughs> My poor guy, man, like, like, we give Peter so much crap, but the guy was just trying to warm himself. I mean, it was, it seemed like it was, I can't remember if, he, if, if, uh, at this, I think at this time it was, it was early morning, and so it would actually get pretty chilly in, uh, in the Middle East at this time. Um, in, uh, I think it was Judea where they were here in Galilee, maybe, uh, Jerusalem. I forget where, I forget where the garden is located. I think it was a Jer uh, on the outskirts, outskirts of Jerusalem, I think. So it was Golgotha. I'm pretty sure. Give me one second. Thank you for your patience. Um, verse 19. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet, and in secret I've said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me, uh, who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when I had said these things, one of the officers who stood by 
Yeah, I wonder if this was a Roman officer. Struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, do you answer the high priest like that? I think it would probably be a Jewish officer, I guess, which that's really interesting because in the in the chosen, again, I'm not saying the chosen is the word, but they do, you know, depict Jewish culture back then pretty, pretty accurately. I don't see any Jewish officers. So why would a Roman officer slap him and say, do you answer the high priest like that? I don't know. Maybe they were faithful to Caiaphas, uh, some of them. Who knows? Jesus answered him, if I've spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Oh, this was Annas. Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore, they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. Uh, and he said, Jesus said earlier, if you deny me before a man, I deny you before my father. Wow. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him, <laughs> whose ear Peter cut off, uh, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? In other words, weren't you the dude that cut off my relative's ear? <laughs> said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied again. Immediately a rooster crowed, just as Jesus said it would. And they led Jesus and other tra uh, other gospels say that that uh, Peter went away from there crying. My man, my dude, I... I, I uh, so so rough so rough verse 28 then they led jesus from caiaphas to the praetorium and it was early morning but they themselves did not go into the praetorium lest they should be defiled but that they may eat that but that they might eat the passover Pilate then went out to them and said what accusation do you bring against this man they answered and said to him if he were not an evildoer we would not have delivered him up to you uh that is complete uh ram droppings uh, he did nothing, and that is exactly why they delivered him to, to Pilate. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die. That's actually not true. The law of Moses clearly uh, stated when it was lawful for people to uh, stone people to death, to, you know, to kill them by the sword, you know, by the edge of the sword. So... Um, they were just, they were lying their way through this entire thing. And the devil is a liar, which is why Jesus called them the father. You know, they are the sons of the father of lies. So they're actually not the son of, uh, uh, you know, sons of God. They're sons of, 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 you know, the father of all lies. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the pre chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom... I, again, I think we have to remember that Pilate was Roman here. He was not Jewish. Um, thank you, Dallas Jenkins, for that uh, awesome portrayal of him in The Chosen. Uh, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. So Jesus is saying, my kingdom is heaven. If this was heaven, then my servants would fight because they know who I was. They would know who I was and they wouldn't allow me to be delivered to the Jews. So clearly this, is, this isn't heaven. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I've come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. I always wonder how Pilate said to said this next line to him when he says, what is truth? I wonder if he meant it like sarcastically, like Pilate said, like, Ugh, what is truth? Or if he went out uh, or if he, you know, said this, he's like, so like, what it, you know, what is the truth? And then maybe Jesus stayed silent or maybe he was just like, you know, hold that thought. I got to go out to the Jews. Um, or maybe he said, what is truth? Like Jesus looked at him and was like, uh, maybe I am the son of God, dude, you know? Um, and then, so I wonder if Pilate actually received the revelation of who he was. And then when Pilate said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. So I feel uh, people always get, get like mad at Pilate. I felt like he was sticking up for him here. Um, and then he says, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they all cried again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. Some of them say he was, uh, like, 
involved in insurgents, which I think is like upheaval, like uprise, uh, you know, rebellion. Um, but this is it. I, I wonder if Pilate was like trying to save Jesus at this point. If he was like, it was like, oh, surely they're not going to choose a robber over this guy. Like clearly, you know, they're, they're not going to release a robber back into their ranks. And when they say, give us Barabbas, he's like, uh, uh, so I wonder now this part's confusing because he takes Jesus and scourges him, which you know means that he gets Jesus gets whipped. So I wonder if after um then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. So let's read this next part and see if we can if we can put this together. So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. So the guards did this. Pilate was just maybe thinking, like, maybe they're going to lash him. Um, and then, you know, the, and then that would be it. Like, that would be the end of it. So I think I, I saw a movie, a depiction of, maybe it was The Passion of the Christ. But they actually, uh, like, a group of people, like, ran and were like, stop, stop. But I think it was Pilate. And they saw that, like, he was, like, Jesus was messed up. Um so and then they said hail king of the jews and they struck him with their hands so i feel like the guards did it again i really feel like Pilate was trying to help jesus here like all right dude i'm just gonna whip you like hopefully after they see that like they you know they'll 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 lighten up you know but yeah not sure not sure Pilate then went out again and said to them behold i am bringing him out to you that you may know that i find no fault in him then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. All right, so this is what I don't get. They have the law. Why are they trying to get Pilate to crucify him? The laws clearly stated that they were able to do it themselves. So I don't know. I, I feel like maybe they were trying to get Pilate to do it because they were like on the off chance we're wrong. At least, at least it wasn't us. I don't know. I don't know if it's like in a submission to authority thing or, you know, whatever it is, but they could clearly you know, do it themselves. Or maybe they knew Pilate would throw them in jail. Who knows? Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was the more afraid and went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Wow. Wow. So he was really scared. He was like, he was like, all right, I got to find out where this guy is from because if I'm crucifying the son of God, like, like I heard the stories. He's like, I heard Moses I heard the story of Moses. I heard the story of Elijah. He's like, I don't, I don't want the Roman Empire to fall. Uh, but Jesus gave him no answer. And Pilate said to him, are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Wow. So here's a Roman governor who is not following the way, who's not even Jewish, and Jesus said that basically God had allowed him to be established and not even allowed it, but God gave, gave the authority and the power to him from above. That's crazy. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews, so, I mean, I, I think he believed him at this point. I think we could say like Pilate was saved maybe even. Yeah, I don't know. Like, God's the judge. But, I mean, after he says that, the one who has delivered me to you has the greater sin. He's like, uh-uh, I don't want none of this stuff. I don't want none of this stuff. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. What manipulative, Jezebelic, religious people. That's so crazy. They didn't care about Caesar. They were, they hated Caesar. He was the one ruling over them. Or I don't know, maybe Caiaphas was in it with Caesar and maybe they were working together to keep the people oppressed or enslaved. I mean, you know, anything's possible, but man, man, this just reeks of Jezebel. Just all the manipulation. 
if you're not a friend of if you let this man go you're not caesar's friend wow so he's saying we're gonna report to caesar if you don't deal with this dude and when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha, or Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover in about the sixth hour. Uh, preparation day of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, so I think 6 a.m. is when their day starts, so it would have been 12 in the afternoon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, away with him away with him crucify him so they so this is interesting so they say that he made himself to be a king it almost seems like uh pilot was like then saying like trying to put it off to them being like uh uh this ain't like a king of rome this is your king like like i like i am still ruling over your king um but but this is you know i i just see him like trying to wiggle <laughs> trying to wiggle his way out of this the poor pilot poor pilot i feel for him I don't, I don't know if people anyone else has sympathy for my for this guy but i just feel like he was trying to do his best you know he didn't know anything about the prophecies or isaiah or anything so i mean you know he has to have somewhat of a pure heart to you know not like let jesus just be completely murdered right then and there but they cried out uh uh about the six hour he said to the jews behold your king but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Again, this is so manipulative because the Jews were taken were taken away from the promised land by Babylon. And then over, over I think it was Babylon, someone, someone can correct me on this. And then from Babylon, they got taken over by Rome. So I, I think it uh, prophesies that uh, either Babylon will come and then they will be ruled over by the Gentiles or, or something. Um, it does prophesy Rome's coming in, um, but they hated Rome. They were the, Rome was the one that was taxing them, that wasn't you know, letting them have like religious freedom and was probably constantly meddling in their affairs. I'm just assuming, again, I, I think you know, The Chosen does a really good job of you know, depicting what culture was back then. So I just find this very interesting, you know, I'm just throwing some ideas out there. So yeah, this is very, this is very manipulative. They delivered him to them to be crucified. Then they took Jesus and led him away. Don't do it, Jesus. And he bearing his cross went out to a place called the place of goal or place of the school, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And if you look at a map of, I think, Jerusalem, um, it is right outside, right outside the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Jeez, must have been a big post. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews so so petty Pilate answered what i have written i have written there you go Pilate. then the soldiers when they crucified jesus took his garment and made four parts to each soldier a part and also the tunic now the tunic was without seam woven from the top in one piece they said therefore among themselves let us not tear it but cast lots for it whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled Oh, they said, therefore, among themselves, I read that weird. Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore, the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, his mother's wife, uh, his mother's, his mother's wife. <laughs> Father, forgive me for that. Uh, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Clopas sounds Greek. Uh, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Very interesting. Very interesting. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. 
No, a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now, what's interesting, um, I would love to have like a study Bible that literally outlined every single prophecy in Isaiah as this whole thing unfolded. That would be really cool. I'm sure I could Google it and whatnot. Someone, someone should definitely take a look at that. Jesus aside is pierced. Therefore, because it was a preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. And the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. I think the point of breaking the legs was that the blood, something with the blood, fl blood flow, it would stop the blood flow or it would make the uh, blood flow rush or something and it would kill them faster. Something like that. Or maybe, um, oh no, because of the way that they hung, I think it would suffocate them. So if they couldn't push up with their legs, they would just hang there and, and suffocate and die. Um, so these guys were professionals, you know, Jesus, Jesus was dead. Jesus was definitely dead. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And actually I read too, um, that after they were crucified, most of the victims were thrown to dogs and it was shown that Jesus's body was not thrown to dogs. Um, which is really interesting if you think about that as well. So uh but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out and he who has seen has testified and his testimony is true and he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled not one of his bones shall be broken and again another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierced okay another thing i love that um i i love this next part pericardial effusion is the buildup of extra fluid in the space around the heart and it's what happens when we die when we die we experience pericardial effusion which is when the blood and and the and where the, the red blood cells and the uh platelets and plasma no the plate platelets are the red blood cells i think the plasma separate in the body this can only happen if someone is dead, according to the, the Journal of the American Medical Association, which is a completely secularly based, um, you know, uh, scientifically peer reviewed article, like all the things. OK, top medicinal journals get published in it. Doctors did a breakdown on the crucifixion of Jesus and saw that pericar that this was a sign of pericardial, what we now call pericardial effusion. All right, which is, yes, Charlie, the medical accuracy of the Gospels is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Uh, so it says, but one of the soldiers pierced the side with spear, and what came out? Blood and water. Okay, blood, the red blood cells, platelets, and then the plasma separated from the red blood cells, which would have proven Jesus was dead, which pretty much puts, uh, you know, silences every theory that he didn't really die. So anyone that says that Jesus didn't really die, they're just ignorant. And you have seen his testify, his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says they shall look on him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus, and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pounds then they took the body of jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the jews is to bury now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid so there they laid jesus because of the jews preparation day for the tomb was nearby i want to uh, i want i want to show you guys this real quick just where i'm seeing this uh Look at this. Marquette University, a study of death by crucifixion with attempted explanation of something. I forget what it says. 
Copper I.O. felt that Jesus had a sudden rupture of the heart as he uttered his last cry. Davis too stated that the hematidrosis in the garden, the scourging, the long walk to Calvary, repeated partial uh, asphyxiation and fluid loss all caused shock, pericardial effusion, and heart failure. Wow. Hematidrosis um, is the medical condition of of sweating drops of blood which is actually something that uh that that does happen when people experience extreme amounts of stress so i mean uh da, 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 da. hypovolemic shock was another part of it because he had lost uh so much blood i mean you just look at the science of the crucifixion and i mean it's it's crazy alatea.org Azus, uh, uh, azusa Pacific University. I mean, they're just all over the place. Why die? Results of a buildup of fluid around the heart and lungs. Pleural effusion. The collapsing of lungs. Hit, hit, failing heart. This is this is so good. This is so good. Yeah, yeah. So just to show you guys, that's 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 what I was talking about right there. Isn't that crazy? There's so so much science. So much science to the crucifixion. It's really, it's just really incredible. So yeah, guys, that is the crucifixion right there. So next time we're going to pick it up in John chapter 20. All right, guys, I'm going to break down. I'm going to break down uh, how we are doing our streams. Okay. I have the whole week booked out now. Um, so I want to read this to you guys. All right. We're going to skip the questions for tonight, but Hey, join the community room and ask the question there. In fact, I might even do that. Um, just keep the community room open. Actually, I really like that idea because that'll, that'll, yeah. So I think from now on, I'm going to actually um, have you guys post your questions and stuff in the community room. All right. Cause that's really where I want people to get plugged into um, because you know, this is, this is something I want to do. I want to take you guys on a journey. I don't want this to be like a one thing. So go to we shall worship.com slash community, join our community, ask your questions, ask for prayer, ask for deliverance, whatever it is you need, ask for worship lessons. Uh, Jesus said, uh, whatever you ask him, it would be given to you. So, um, you know, I have no reason not to give you what it, what it is that you need if it's available to us. Uh, I see Nikki Pizza. I see Jasmine. I see John. What's going on, guys? Um, I cannot see who's on Facebook and all that, but but um, I see Charlie. Charlie, you had a couple of comments I didn't get a chance to read. Uh, blessings all in the name of Jesus. The no answering is prophesied in Isaiah 53. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Yeah, that's that make them suffocate yeah uh the breaking of the legs the jesus fainted theory as a reason for the empty tomb is a terrible explanation yeah it shows the ignorance that they that they don't understand that these guys were trained killers jesus was dealt extra torture because Pilate was trying to appease the religious leaders as if to say this is enough punishment for him right i, I think he was trying to help him man like people you know people uh i've, I've heard re you know re read that passage many different ways and they uh they they seem to contradict I me mean, looking out for my boy pilot but yeah maybe maybe he was you know malicious i mean i don't know i don't i don't know so yeah very interesting very 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 interesting so um that's it guys so submit your questions in classroom i'm gonna post uh i'm gonna post on the classroom here i'm gonna do i'm gonna share this tab here so i'm gonna go uh so much fun tonight reading through another reading through john 17 through 19. uh what questions or takeaways did you guys walk walk away with post them below let's get some good conversation started all right, so I'm going to post that there. If you guys want to be a part of this community room, again, you just have to go to the community page, download the classroom app, click the join the community. Listen, 
if you guys aren't part of the community room i don't know what you're doing we got we got content for days i literally got the whole all the previous bible readings we've been doing i got drums courses guitar courses vocal uh vocals courses these are all in development of course but yeah i don't know what you're doing if you're if you're not a part of the community so if you're if you're on right now you need to get off you need to go join the community okay all right so uh i'm gonna pray this out um oh yes i was gonna go over the live schedule okay so live schedule all right i'm looking at the week we got let me see today's all right so mondays are on unless on, until further notice i'll just start on sunday so sunday is going to be why does sunday look weird all right i'll go from today so tuesdays are going to be 7 to 8 p.m wednesday is going to be from looks like five to six but tomorrow because um we're we're actually going to an event in vermont it's going to be from 3 30 to 4 30 okay so tomorrow is 3 30 to 4 30 p.m we're going to do a guitar lesson all right live guitar lesson um but otherwise it's normally going to be 5 to 6 p.m thursdays thursdays are go out wait is that going to work for tuesday tuesday might have to change <laughs> Tuesday might have to change. Okay. I might have to adjust that. Tuesdays might have to be like eight to nine or something like that. And then that means I'd have to move that to like five. Okay. So Tuesday, obviously we were live seven to eight today. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesdays are going to be five o'clock, but tomorrow will be three 30 to four 30. Thursday is going to be six to seven. Friday is going to be six to seven saturday is going to be eight to nine and sunday is going to be six to seven okay so pretty much and then mondays are going to be six to seven as well so pretty much everything is six to seven i just have a couple of classes that um interfere with that so that's where i have to move it around and whatnot but we'll figure it out the oddballs tuesday and wednesday but basically uh thursday friday sunday monday is six to seven saturday is eight to nine and then tuesday is going to have uh, a different time so the oddballs are tuesday tuesday and saturday tuesday wednesday saturday all right so what's the point we're going live every day all right so um put it in your calendar put those times in the calendar i'll probably make a post i'll put it on our page or something i'll make a graphic um so you guys always know that um but the best way to know is i give live updates on the community page so anytime i'm going live just go to the page just uh go to the community page if you want to see uh, when we're about to go live all right, so I'm going to pray us out. Father, we thank you, God, so much for who you are, for what you've done for all of us. Father, God, I thank you, God, that uh, you make it very emphatically clear in the Gospel of John that Jesus is you, that Holy Spirit is you, that they are all God, and that, God, you are, G you are the Son, and you are the Spirit. So I just thank you, Lord, that you would continue to reveal yourself to us in a, an amazing way. I thank you, God, for heal that the, you say that the word is life to the bones. So I thank you, God, that we would eat your word like it's medicine. We would eat your words like it's vitamins. I thank you, God, we wouldn't go days without reading your word. I thank you, Father, that um, that you would have mercy on us for the days that we forget to spend time with you. That, God, we wouldn't um, use it as just an excuse to uh, use, you know, maintaining health as an excuse to spend time with you. But God, that, that would just be one reason, but that the main, our heart posture would be that we want to know you like Jesus know you. We want to have unity with you like Jesus had unity with you. We want to have the relationship that the father had with the son. And as you being the father and me being the son have a relationship, God, we pray, Lord, that it would be an exact parallel of your relationship with Jesus in Jesus name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Join the community room. Oh, there you go. Good night, guys. Join the community room. It's awesome. Bye bye. Thanks guys for joining in. Join us tomorrow at 3.30.
Good night.